Hi everybody, Brendan from c21teaching.com.au here. In today's Flip Teacher Professional Learning video, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Forms on Office 365 to create a online form to collect some information. There are a huge number of ways that you can use Microsoft Forms, but the way that I'm going to use it today to show you the basic functions of it and how to uh, set up a new form is to create a, uh, a getting to know you type form that you might use at the start of the year with your new class. Obviously the first thing you need to do is log into Office 365, you need to select Forms, it will bring you to this page here. This is the, the hub for Microsoft Forms and is what you'll see. After you've made some forms, they will appear here in Tiles. To create a new one, you simply click on the new form. Before we do that though, let's just take a quick look at the few menus that we can see. We of course have our apps up here. In the top left hand corner, we can quickly access the other Office 365 apps. When we are inside a form, if we click on this forms button, which appears on every uh, every page in forms, it will bring us back to this page. Over on the right hand side, we have a quick menu here, which allows us to log out and access some profile details. So let's go ahead and create a brand new Microsoft form by clicking on the plus sign, it brings us to this page. Now at the moment, there's nothing there because I haven't done anything. Before we start doing things, let's take a quick look at the menus that we've got. Top left hand corner is exactly the same. Top right hand corner is the same with a few extra things. The preview function is fairly straightforward, I think. The theme allows you to change the background color or the image. Now, as far as I've been able to find out, there is not a way to upload a custom image of your own to make that the background image. When you have finished your form, you will obviously want to send it out to whoever the target audience is. You simply click on the send form. There are a few different ways you can do that, which you can see there. The bottom of that menu, there are a few other options that you will want to take note of and you will want to set up according to what you are using the form for. In particular, pay attention to the only people in my organization. If you want your form to be filled out by people anywhere, you need to make sure that anyone with the link will be able to access the form. You can click on the see all settings button to see all of the settings. You've got a little bit more there and within that you can set some options, some constraints for when responses will be recorded and whether or not you want the questions shuffled up. This one here is pretty much the same branching I will get to in just a moment as part of this creation. Now let's get into creating a brand new form. We have a blank form here. First thing we need to do of course is to give it a title. Uh, as I said I'm using this to create a getting to know you form. This is the kind of thing you might use at the start of the year to help you get to know your students a little bit quicker. Uh, give it a title, you might want to enter a description. This form, this form will help, help me to get to know a little about you. You can see that if you click off the question, you kind of get a bit of a preview of what that question will look like anyway. Now again, there's another little icon over here. This is an image icon. You can set a title image as part of the title. Uh, it brings up this box here. You can do an image search using the inbuilt search engine, which is Bing. You can upload from your OneDrive or you can upload from your computer using the different options there. I have found an issue with the image search function. Trying to insert an image, it brings up an error. You go back to the Microsoft Forms hub screen, click back into this form and the image is there, but it does tell you that there's an error with that form. Just something to be aware of. Let's go ahead, let's add our first question. Now you can see that there are a couple of different options. Choice and quiz are exactly the same with the exception that in the quiz version, you have to indicate which of the responses is the correct one. You can assign a certain number of points for that question and you can input a message that will be displayed to a user who selects the incorrect options. That's the only difference. So we'll go ahead and we'll put in a choice quiz. Actually, no, we won't do that first. The first thing we're gonna do is actually gonna put in a text question. What is your name? Uh, very, very simple. What is your name? We can select a long answer or we can leave it as a short answer. We can make this required or not required simply by clicking on the buttons here. As you can see, it'll turn green. The three dots here lets you put in subtitles. This might be useful if you are working in a school where there are multiple languages. You might have ESL students and you can put in, if you've got access to it, you can put in the translation of the question into their native tongue. You can use something like Google Translate. Word of caution, it's not always correct, but it's there as an option. You can also put restrictions on the questions. You can specify that the question must, or the response rather, must have one of these functions. This is particularly useful if you're doing mathematics questions or other 
other types of questions where you might want to be really specific about the type of answer you accept. So let's go ahead. What is your name? Enter your answer. I don't need a long answer for that one. I can leave that as short. Restriction. I'll leave that off for the moment because we only want a fairly straightforward answer. And a question. The next one is, we'll go with the date function. When is your birthday? Now you can typically get this information fairly easily from your student administration services. Depending on what kind of portal you're using, you should be able to get access to that information fairly easily anyway. But it's nice to get it directly from the students all in the one spot. And again, with this type of question, you've got the option of inserting media. It doesn't necessarily have to be an image. You can insert a video as well. And you could potentially, in fact, make the video your question. If you're doing a history unit question, for example, you might want to have a little snippet of a clip, uh, maybe from a speech, and the student has to input the date of that speech. Yeah, there's lots of different ways you can do it. When is your birthday? You cannot change, as far as I've been able to find out, you cannot change the date format. Obviously, this is an American platform, which is month, day, year. So I've not been able to find a way of changing the date arrangement. Again, required or not required, you can move the question up or down. Add another question. Let's rate this question. And again, you can have media in this to have your students indicate how they feel about a particular sport, for example. Let's add, it's loading it. Question, how do you feel about rugby league? And they can give it stars or numbers. Let's put a subtitle in just to clarify. Let's make that a required question as well. How do you feel about rugby league? Five stars means you love it. So you can see there what the subtitle looks like. It's just a little bit of extra information about the question to clarify it. Next one, add question. Let's add a choice. You might want some indication from the students about how they feel about a subject. So this is a option question without the quiz function turned on. You can allow students to select multiple options, which changes it from a radio checkbox to a cross checkbox. If I turn that back off again, notice how the symbol changes. You can only select one of these, whereas you can now select multiple. Selecting quiz here, what that will do is it will give you this. You now have to select the correct answer. What is three plus two? In this one here, I need to tell the uh, form which, the, which one is the correct answer. By ticking that one there, you can see that the tick is now here. It tells me that is the correct answer. I can put in a message for respondents who select incorrect answer. I'm going to choose to not do that. And you can give this point. So let's give that one point. If I select, if I deselect quiz here, it will turn it into one of these. You can see they're exactly the same. Uh, in terms of the structure, it's just whether they're a quiz or not a quiz, whether you get the correct answer, the points, and the message for respondents choices. That's all of the options. Up the top here, because I've added a quiz in, it gives us a one point option. It tells us how many points there are. When you send this out and you get some responses, the responses will appear here. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've submitted five responses. I can now go to the responses tab here on my Google form simply by clicking on responses and I can see a summary of what the data is that I've collected. I can see straight away five responses, the average score is one. So the active status or the status rather tells us whether the form is still accepting responses or whether it's now closed off. As we scroll down, we can see how many responses we've had for each question. Remember, not all questions will necessarily be required questions. And the latest three responses to those questions. Uh, you see the quick summary there. This one here, which is a rating, it gives us the average rating overall. Which subject do you feel you'll need the most help with? The choice and the quiz options will give you the data as a pie chart, a color-coded pie chart. And for the quiz options, it will tell you how many respondents answered the question correctly as well. And you can see that just there. And it hovers, if you hover over the answer, it shows you on the pie chart how many people chose, or what percentage of people rather, chose each option. That's the summary view. If you want to drill down and go into more detail, you can click on the individual responses. If you set it so that they don't, people don't have to log in, it will simply show as anonymous, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. See each person's individual response. You also have in here the option to delete a response or to print a response out. There are a number of different reasons why you might want to do either of those options. You also up here in the right hand corner have the option to open in Excel. Now this does not open up in Excel online, which I think is a bit of a flaw of the system. It actually prompts you to save the Excel form onto your desktop. You can then upload it into Excel online, that's fine, but it doesn't do so automatically. That's all the time I have for in this video. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget for more helpful Flip Teacher professional learning videos to head to c21teaching.com.au. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.